All right. Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. This is the Preds versus the Boston Bruins, part two. Part two is the fact that, yes, I am frustrated. Yes, I am angry. Yes, things are going wrong. Do I hate the organizations? No. Specific people in it? Disappointed? Yes. I don't even hate Hines. I just hate the way he coaches. I've never been impressed from day one. I wasn't impressed with what he did in New Jersey. I wasn't impressed with what he did in the in the U.S. development program, especially since going to New Jersey, given that the U.S. development program won four championships after that. As John is in a lot of pain, his back is very messed up, so please bear with him. <laughs> Um, but I'm just saying, yes, <laughs> the, the frustration is so bad. It hurt John's back. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but so the frustration as a fan is I want to win. I want right. to win. I want to know we're in a rebuild. I don't want to be at the cap during a rebuild. And that looks like how it's going to be. Because I don't see this team getting better. It'll be very interesting to see how March 3rd plays out. Because here's my yeah. thing. You get a first round pick and some prospect offers for certain players. I'm going. You know why? Trust the system. Trust the admirals to produce again. Trust the admirals to get you there again. Or did we all forget who 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 developed Freddie Gaudreau? Who developed Pontus Abert? Who developed Victor Arvidsson, Pekka Rene, UC Saros, Matthias Ackholm, Ryan Ellis? Let's not forget who developed guys like Tanner Janot, undrafted Frederick, Frederick Ford? But Yeah. Frederick Forsberg. <laughs> Who developed Kevin Fiala? Oh, what a waste of that was. You're welcome, LA. Who developed Craig Smith? You're welcome, Boston. You gave up on him, too. Every time you get something going in the right direction, just because they want a little bit of money, you, you, you just let them go. Tanner Janot deserves at least two million, maybe three. There's no cap room for it. And watch, they'll find they'll sign Fabro for like five. Fabro ain't worth a million. The way he played tonight was so horrible, it's not even funny. Like I said, I'm gonna rip this team apart. Lankinen only plays as good as the defense in front of him, which there is none this year. Ever since Boro's injury, this team has gone downhill quick. They were fine for a little while. They had a good three-game series before the that before the All-Star game. That didn't go so well after. I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat it anymore. Like I said, lost videos, I'm sick of doing them. I'm sick of being angry. I'm sick of being upset at this organization. I'm sick of losing games we should win, like against Arizona. Um, you know, if, if, if the seat's not hot now, it never will be. And 
That's just because here's the thing. The Preds will get say they get a top five pick, they'll draft a defenseman, which isn't their problem. They can't get anything going offensively. There's nothing there for them offensively. This team has not played good in the latter part of at least two seasons. Because here's the thing. When faced up against good teams, they play mediocre. When placed against bad teams, they play worse. This year. Last year, it was just mediocre play. They got lucky and squeaked in because a few teams in our division sucked. And the West wasn't that good. The West is good this year. LA is ready to strike again. Looks like Seattle's primed for a playoff run now. But what do all these teams have in common that the Preds don't? They have a superstar player. And I'm sorry. You sit there and tell me, oh, we have Yossi? Yeah. Guess what? The Kings, Kings have Mackenzie Weger. The, um, what is that? Uh, the, uh, the Jets have Morrissey, who's been playing phenomenal. The Stars have at least three good defensemen. Let's not forget Kale McCarr over there in Colorado. But what else do they have over there in Colorado? Oh, three superstar forwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where's the where's the Preds superstar forwards? Do do they have one? I haven't seen one this season. Do they have one? They have a guy who can take over a game outside of Yossi and Saros. I've yet to see it this year. More than halfway through the season. Not a whole lot to look forward to for the rest of the season, as far as I'm concerned. If you're a Preds fan right now, you're sitting there, well, kind of starting to look like me, ripping your hair out. You might have wondered why I went bald. The stress of being a fan of this team is a little too much for me. Not saying I'm turning my back, but I love this team with everything I got. It's probably why I lose my hair when I do this stuff. The understanding of frustration is, is this. Watch this. Hey, John, how frustrated were you when the pre uh, when the Avalanche traded away Drew Shane and blew that whole thing up? Pretty frustrated. Looking back on it, how helpful was it? It was pretty helpful. Did they have to blow the team completely up, or did it was it just a small blow up and then fix what was up? There were holes. It was a small blow up and fixing holes. Correct. What do the Preds need to do? That exact Six thing. holes. Yep. They have no offense, uh, no guys who are able to take over the uh, over the game. And here's the thing: Tomasino is not even ready to play in the end yet. From what I've seen of him in the end, it, it, it looks like he's a lost puppy dog at times. Novak looks scared out of his mind at times because his teammates are just all over the goddamn place, not thinking about team play at all. This team has no structure, no con no configuration, and that falls down on the coaching. They came into this game looking completely unprepared. You're telling me there's no video for no video on on Boston. You're telling me there's none. You can't sit in the video room and and learn there what they like to do, and then figure out a way to shut it down. You had three days off to do that. And you came out with no energy. After three days of rest, you came out with no energy. Till the third period? 
This is not the look of a person who is very happy with this team. This is the person of the look of the guy who was literally back in the day in the 70s, you would hear about coaches wanting to beat the tar out of their players for underperforming. But I prefer this quote much better. Vince Lombardi once told a player on the Green Bay Packers, there is a plane, bus, or boat leaving town every day. You don't like it here? There you go. Because here's my opinion. You don't want to win here? There's a door. You don't want to, you don't want to have fun here? There's a door. You don't want to succeed? There's a door. Your, the whole situation of, of, of the Preds over the last, since I've started, has literally frustrated me to wit's end. Because my first season, we won the President's Trophy and got bounced in the first, in the second round. Then got bounced in the first round. Then got bounced in the bubble play in by Arizona. Who shouldn't have even been there. By the standings, the Preds would have made the playoffs and Arizona would have out. But because of the bubble and the games on the play, guess what? They were out. Who's that fall on? Let's not even talk about how the Preds treat ECHL teams. Or at least the factor of the Preds' current ECHL situation. Norfolk's garbage. And that's not even our affiliate. We just send guys there. Which I wouldn't talk about your confidence killer. I wouldn't be surprised if Tomas Vomachka retired after this season because of the way that this happened. You want to talk about how bad things are? The only good thing going on right now in this whole entire system is them. Tied for first place. Finding ways to win every night. Coached every game. If Carl Taylor doesn't like something, he says something. And this today was the first time I ever saw Dave, saw Hines get mad at anybody. Yelling and screaming about a high stick call, which technically is at the behest of the referee. Now, was it a high stick? Yes. Did was it in the in the act of a hockey play? Yes. So should it have been a penalty? No. Was it? Yes. Anything you can do about it? Nope. Just that simple. I went on my flipping rant. I'm gonna leave it over to John to say whatever he feels like for a second. Yeah, no, you're right, man. This team's been lackluster all season. And the people that should be producing aren't producing. And I don't know if it's just the system or if having an off year, but the way I look at it, the whole team is having an off year. Where's Duchesne from last year? Where's Granlin from last year? Where's Forsberg from last year? Where's Geno from last year? Where's Trenton from last year? Where's Systems from last year? Where's that second line from last year? Where's anything from last year? Right. On the spreads. All right. They're all still there. Nothing's changed. Whether it's a lack of effort from the players or it's a lack of effort in the coaching room, whoever it is, it needs to be fixed. Yeah. You also have guys going into their prime right now and you're wasting it. Truthful fact here. Okay. Do you know who the best face-off guy tonight was? Who took? Tomasino. 100% on face-offs. 
Tommy Novak, 73% on faceoffs. Where do you start winning a game in the faceoff circle? All right. Where do you start. Then you got to get pucks to the net, which they've sucked at all year. Shoot the puck into the goalie's chest. Don't show up till the third period. That's this team's motto this year. I don't know how many years I've been barking this, but you got to play 60 minutes to win a game. You yeah. know. But as I'd say it right now, the way I see it, Reds players, coaching staff, and GM, y'all are all on life support. And things keep going the way they're going. We're going to be looking at where were the Nashville Predators and what happened. They have gone missing. It is the case. Welcome. Hello. Today, uh, the unsolved mystery. <laughs> mm -hmm. I hate joking about my team this way, but I have to. I have to take this seriously. Because obviously... The boys who laced up and the coaching staff who put on a suit and tie today, they went, where's my paycheck? And went, thank you. And called it a night. Now, that being said, Tonight was an embarrassment. And to all the boys who played, that was embarrassing. That was a butt kicking. Do better. Because as I said in the first video, we won't be covering them again till either Hines, Poyle, or they win. So... And I could be wrong in that statement. I could get more angry. I could show up on the show and just be a bitter fan who's angry. Basically turn into the dude from Major League. <laughs> you know, the guy who's always yelling at his team, you know, and, and yelling and yelling and yelling until they turn it around. Do I got to do that again? Hey, Carrie, I remind him what I do. So crap list, shit list, useless list, whatever you want to call it. That whole team. Anybody who was on the bench tonight, minus the reporters, because can't blame them for doing their job. At least they showed up and did it. Your guy's job was to show up and play hockey. What it looked like you guys were doing was figure skating. Actually, what it looked like is you were playing a game of shinny and you couldn't have even beat an SPHL team. You turned the puck over. You can't play well. You haven't had a good series since the season started when you beat San Jose back-to-back and were undefeated in the league for a whopping three days. <laughs> 
until Dallas kicked our butts and then took over the whole division. Oh, and by the way, want to take a look at Dallas? Dallas used to be one uh, a fringe team, and they went out and they bought and they built around their players. Hey, Nashville, what have you done? That's right. Trade away one of the best defensemen to ever play. A guy who gave everything for you, including his body. A guy who wore the C. And I guess I'm talking about Shea Weber. The only guy I can't blame for getting the hell out of Nashville is Suter right now. At this point, it's almost like he knew what was going to happen. Ten years in advance. The real kicker and the real sucky part about all of this. I don't like Suter still. I like him as a Badger. Liked him as an Admiral. Liked him for his time during the Preds. But until he's retired, he will get booed in my presence. <laughs> Just because that's how we roll Nashville. And you know it. He left. Had he stayed, I don't know, but had he stayed, there could have been a chance of something amazing with the Preds. Him and him and Shea Weber, back home and Yossi and Dallas were all in the system at the time. Could you imagine what the Preds defense would look like? I don't know, man. I don't see there's many NHL teams could beat that defensive lineup. And even if you still trade Shea Weber for P.K. Subban, you still have Suter to go with that. Say you still trade Ellis and go get Glass and get McDonough. And you still have all these players. It's just the mistakes you've made. And yes, Hoyle, we still praise you for the Forestburg trade. I still don't know how you convinced them of that. Still trying to figure that one out. But, I mean, we really need to think to figure it out because uh, what, what, what are you going to do? Where are you going to go from here? Because Nashville, you got to do something. And here, what if the Flames or the Wild come calling and give an option you can't refuse? And what if they still miss? Lots of opportunity here. There's teams that are in the basement in the cap that could eat cap. And Nashville's got plenty of cap to give up. Yeah. I just don't see us wanting to be that team. And 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 as far as as far as I'm concerned, um I, I just don't see a positive coming out of this year. No, I don't either. I mean, the only positive could be that we we find a way to get you know, our coaching situation figured out. All right. GM situation figured out. And get going in the right direction. But Nashville has to make that decision. And that comes from up top. That comes from the CEO putting the pressure on Boyle to make the job, the, 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 thing, the decisions he has to make. And if you're going to sit there and go, our coaching job co staff has done a great job this year. Doing what? Doing what? You know, the Preds haven't challenged a single goal all season, to my recollection. I barely see Hines yelling at a referee when a bad call is made. When they're on the power play or there's a last minute, it's always the assistant coach in the huddle, not the head coach. I just don't see where that's a positive to me. He's not a head coach. He's an assistant coach. And he needs to act like a head coach. You're not their friend. You're their boss. I have a shirt that I will wear on the next Preds loss if I do a video that says, do what the coach says or get lost. 
I wear that when my kids misbehave. I'm the coach. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't understand it. What what would and and that's the thing. Like I don't even know what Ecom would bring on the trade market. I don't know what Joe Hansen could bring on the trade market. Don't know Granlin. Don't know any of this stuff. But I do know that their cap hits are are holding the Preds back from building forward in any any future years to any particular players. And these guys aren't playing worth the money that they're getting paid. Right. Because to my recollection, I don't even think the Preds have a player in the top 20 in points. Top 20? They don't have anybody in the top 50 so far. The best player in the league, the best player Nashville has is Roman Yossi with 44 points. That is 83rd best with a plus three. Forsberg has 42 points. That's fine. Duchesne has 42 points. That's fine. Anybody else? I'm seeing a lot of Boston and everybody else. Uh, no. Nobody there. No, look, we're almost to 200. Anybody in there? Oh, look, it's Mikel Gradler with 29 points, 178. $5 million contract paid. Also, I want to add into that. He's a minus 18, which means his goals against are almost double what he scores. Are almost, yeah, almost double what he scores. Because a minus is for every time you're on the ice getting scored against versus your, you scoring. Or your team scoring. So every time he's out there, given even if he doesn't get a point, right now he is almost he is 10, 11 points away from being double of what his points against are. This team just doesn't play defense. What wins the championships? But I'm going to end this because I've ranted enough. I'm frustrated enough. I can't handle this anymore. I need a real cigarette. And John knows when I need that. One more game like this, and you're going to wish I never did this podcast. This has been from Milwaukee to Nashville. Five, five fans, four fans. Hey, fans. Thank you guys for watching. Y'all rock. But Nashville, get your shit together.